Since the birth of the Islamic Republic 30 years ago, Iran has been at daggers drawn with the West. In 1979, Iran had taken American diplomats hostage. The USA and Iran had had no diplomatic relations since. Iran aggressively pursues these weapons and exports terror, while an unelected few repress the Iranian people's hope for freedom. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil. Orientalism tries to answer the question of why, when we think of the Middle East, for example, we have a preconceived notion of what kind of people live there, what they believe, how they act, even though we may never have been there or indeed even met anyone from there. Basically, that Muslims are really two things. One, they're villains of one sort, villains and fanatics. The whole history of these Orientalist representations, which, which portrayed the Muslim and the Orientalist as, in effect, a lesser breed. In other words, they're, the only thing they understand is the language of force. This is, this is the principle here, that unless you give them a bloody nose, they won't understand. We can't talk reason with them. <laughs> the human side of the Islamic and, and especially Arabic world are rarely to be found. Uh, and, and the net result is this vacancy on the one hand and these easy, almost automatic images of terror and violence. There is a handy set of images and cliches, you know, not just from the newspapers and the television, but from movies. You no, know it's the right decision if you just give it a chance. No, I won't stay here. You can't eat me. Now, you listen to me. You're in my country now. You're my wife. You do as I say. You understand me? If you marry an Iranian man, you automatically become an Iranian citizen. I've told you before, you don't touch the phone and you don't leave the house. The laws regarding women are very strict. It is your duty to tell your husband everything. You cannot have secrets. You have no rights to the children. I'll be with you. You'll never see my father again. Do you understand me? Dear Lord, hear our prayer. Please don't take her. Please don't take her. Please help us leave Iran and get back to America. the idea around at the end of the Cold War that, you know, there are uh, foreign devils. Otherwise, what, what are we doing with this gigantic military, you know, uh, this huge military budget that is twice as much as the entire world's military budget combined? Uh, so you have to have threat. And the result is uh, it's very hard to find works that are sympathetic to the Arabs in Islam. Islam is seen as the enemy of Christianity, and the United States sees itself as a Christian or Judeo-Christian country in affiliation with Israel, and that Islam is the great enemy, the, the, the competitor. There's a, there's a Just take a moment and flip through some of our most popular religious channels. Islam, a religion of two billion members that's growing by 50 million people annually. Nearly every major terrorist network in the world is led by Islamic fundamentalists. Islam is, as we have seen, a religion that teaches the violent subjugation of all non-Muslims. It promises paradise to terrorists and makes the vilest deed a thing of beauty in the eyes of Allah. But as you can see, when I talk, I speak with an American accent, which you would think as an American, Iranian-American actor, I should be able to play any part, good, bad, what have you. But a lot of times in Hollywood, when casting directors find out you're of Middle Eastern descent, they go, oh, you're Iranian, great. Can you say, I will kill you in the name of Allah? 
I go, I could say that, but what if I were to say, hello, I'm your doctor? They go, great, and then you hijack the hospital. <laughs> like, I think you're missing the point here. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind playing bad guys. I wanna play a bad guy, I wanna rob a bank. I wanna rob a bank in a film. I wanna rob a bank in a film, but do it with a gun, with a gun, not with a bomb strapped around me, right? Because I imagine the director, Maz, I think your character would rob the bank with a bomb around him. Why would I do that? If I want the money, why would I kill myself? <laughs> right? <laughs> Give me all your money or I'll blow myself up. <laughs> well then, blow yourself up. <laughs> Just do it outside, please. In the early days, you know, <laughs> 150 years, 200 years ago, the British and the French who traveled to the Middle East and those who didn't travel to the Middle East conjured up these images of, of the Arab as the Oriental other. The travel writers, the artists who fabricated these images and who were very successful as a matter of fact. And these images were transmitted and inherited by us. We took them, we embellished them, and here they are. The the Americans, the experiences much less direct. I mean, there's never been an American occupation of the Near East. So I would say the difference between British and French Orientalism on the one hand and the American experience of the Orient on the other is that the American one is much more um, indirect. It's much more based on abstractions. The second big thing, I think, that differs in the American experience from the British and the French of Orientalism is that American Orientalism is very politicized. Stoning of Soraya M, which tells the true story of a young woman facing violence and persecution in an Iranian village. It is not only her story, but the story of women throughout Iran and other countries throughout the Middle East. Cyrus Norasta is the director of the film. <laughs> oh, it took place, and it could only take place in a situation where the penal code in Iran allows for it. And I know maybe you don't want to get political because I, I actually, this is a very disturbing film and I want everybody to watch it and it has not got, gotten the widespread uh, distribution that I think it deserves to get. I, I guess what politically bothers me and angers me is that when you look at, for example, all that American troops have done in Afghanistan to liberate women that were not, weren't allowed to go to school, weren't allowed to go to work, if, if you look at the same thing in, in Iraq and elsewhere, and the opportunity because of American sacrifice to free women from this tyranny, where are liberals in all of this? Why, are, why aren't there more outspoken women's rights advocates in all of this? Politics and Hollywood's images are linked. They reinforce one another. Policy enforces mythical images. Mythical images help enforce policy. Jack Valente, president of the Motion Picture Association of America, has said, quote, Washington and Hollywood spring from the same DNA, end quote. The Arab image began to, to change immediately after World War II. There were three things that impacted the change. The Palestinian-Israeli conflict, in which the United States has unequivocally supported Israel, the Arab oil embargo in the 70s, which angered Americans when gas prices went through the ceiling, and the Iranian Revolution, which increased Arab-American tensions when Iranian students took American diplomats hostage for more than a year. These three pivotal events brought the Middle East into the living rooms of Americans and together helped shape the way movies stereotyped Arabs and the Arab world.